I begin my journey right from here to the city of Sialkot, the birthplace of Iqbal. Perhaps in this travel, I would be able to show some special features of that righteous man. Today, Sialkot is a city in Punjab, Pakistan. The city, when Iqbal was born, was part of India. Oh, you who are familiar with me, come with me to the childhood alleys. Tread on memory's pathway. Come with me to my intimates alley. In my childhood home, on roofs quite stranger to all noises. ये वो घर है जहाँ अलामा इकबाल 19 नवंबर 1877 को सुबह पांच Here is the very room wherein Iqbal was born on the 9th of November 1877 at 5:14 a.m. The house here was built by his grandfather, Sheikh Muhammad Rafiq. He was the first to occupy the house. On the 6th of February, 1861, he bought three small rooms and a house near here until Iqbal was born. Later, Iqbal's elder brother came here. The house has undergone no change since then. Sialkot, a city in northeastern Punjab province located at the foot of the snow-clad Kashmiri mountain. It was here in this crowded city where Allama Iqbal's first educational basis took root. Having received his first training by father and such a great teacher as Molina Mir Hassan, the young Muhammad entered Scotch Mission School to start his official education therein. Muhammad was 18 when he finished his pre-university courses with honors, receiving two academic gold medals. Admitted on a scholarship, he left Sialkot for Lahore as advised by his teacher Mir Hassan. Lahore was a city southwest of his birthplace, 125 kilometers away from it. Then Muhammad Iqbal went to Punjab University, one of Pakistan's oldest universities established in 1882 by the British ruler of the Indian subcontinent in Lahore. There the instruction language was English, though some lessons were taught in Urdu. Young Iqbal of Sialkot went there to continue his education. Very soon, he got so famous throughout the world due to his thoughts and his Persian-Urdu poems. Known as Iqbal Lahori, he was destined to get his BA and MA here and composed his earliest poems. Allama Iqbal ne Alame Iqbal nurtured the wish for an independent Pakistan. He would say a new country, an Islamic country, would come into existence on the world map. The country's name, he would say, will be Pakistan. Iqbal did not give this name to a new country, but surely he had it as a Muslim country in mind.
from a national poet to the poet of the Islamic world. His versified story, The Familiar Secrets and the Mysteries of Rapture, is first translated into English by Reynold Nicholson and published in the region. Years later, his Javid Name is translated into German and Turkish in 1957 by those who study Islam, including Anna Marie Schimmel. The book is published in Munich, Hermann Hesse. The German writer and a winner of the Nobel Prize in Literature writes an introduction to Javid Name, as requested by the translator. Hesse writes, Sir Mohammed Erbal belongs to three intellectual domains. His works are the outcome of these three intellectual domains, Indian intellectual domain, spiritual domain, and Western thoughts domain. So many memories are related to this house. My father came to live in this house when he was 11. Never in my life have I been interested in the world's wealth or posts. I built this very house just to accept my wife's repeated requests. My wife's fate in this house had a different form. Here became a safe place for those in search of their identity. I clearly saw that most Muslims in the motherland had lost their Islamic identity and to regain it, they need to struggle hard. This house, this quiet corner, became a place for those who wish to fly thoughts of self-belief, something much needed by all. This house originally belonged to my father, Javid Erbal. The house title deed had already been issued to my grandmother. Upon the death of my grandmother, the deed was transferred to my father. Allah Erbal would live here as my father's tenant. He paid the rent to my father every month or every three months. Signs of going senile can be seen very easily in me. The tick-tock of the clock shows clearly the passage of my life. So quickly pass opportunities. So little time have I to reach the end of the line. Oh, the memory of those days when time's sword was allied with the strength of our hands and unveiled the face of truth. Our nails tore loose the knot of this world. Our bowing in prayer gave blessings to the earth. From the jar of truth we made rosy wine gush forth. We charged against the ancient taverns. This house was built under my grandmother's wish. But only for two or three days she lived here. She was sick when they carried her in a car, but she survived only for two or three days. At the age of 11, my father lost his mother when my aunt was about six years old. My father and my aunt would come here every day to see Alame, who was lying on this bed. Alame called them and my aunt would come up to Alame, and my father would sit on the other side of the bed. This way, Alame would feel comfortable. I usually went to see them after school. Alame was always lying on his bed and resting. I was always beside him. Other people would also go there. Many came here to see him. Among them, General Muhammad Ali Jannah, Jawaharlal Nehru, Muhammad Ali Jawhar, and many other intimate friends of Allame. They would come here just before or after midday to have a chat with Allame about topics like poetry, philosophy, or any other things. Alama 
Then came the last night of Alama's life. His two children came to have their last look at him. Alame was still conscious. Someone from Germany had come to see him, a friend of his or his teacher. The German called the two children and hugged them. My father was leaving the room, but my aunt wasn't. She wanted to stay with him for a while. At the time, I felt I had to stay with Alame and to sit there motionlessly. Our tutor, Aunt Doris, came there to take me with her. I told her, I will stay here at least for a while. Alame told the tutor that she knows that this is the last meeting between the father and the daughter. That is why she doesn't want to leave. Let her stay. She knows this is the last time she sees her father. And finally, I felt something was going to happen. For that very reason, I didn't want to leave the place. Early in the morning, Alame passed away. The muezzin was calling out the morning adhan. Here, beside this bed, was standing his close friend, Ali Bakhsh. There were some other friends too, although most of them were saying their morning prayers at the mosque at that time. Back then, the mosque was more like a house than anything else. Friends were there to say their prayers in congregation. After their prayers, Alame passed away. His last words were the two testimonies. Then his soul flew to the sky. I personally suppose people like Alame will come to this world several centuries later. Alame Akbar Lahori died at the age of 61 on April 21, 1938. After a life of diligence and hard work, in the last moments of his life, he put his hand on his chest, telling Ali Bakhsh, his man, I have a pain here, and upon uttering this ambiguous, meaningful remark, he bade farewell to the world. Many attended his funeral and accompanied him to his final resting place next to Masjid Shah in Lahore. On his deathbed, Alame composed this song. Does a song gone come back again? No, no, no. Does a breeze come from Hejaz? No, no. There finally came to an end all those days of poverty. Does a Gnostic come back a second time? No, 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 no. Alame's thoughts and philosophy will remain with us forever, only if we follow him.